As a fellow business owner, you probably know that content creation is basically what keeps the lights on in your business, right? It's how you grow your audience, it's how you build trust with your audience, how you connect with your audience, and ultimately, how you sell. Either it's your courses, or your one-on-one -on -one services, or your coaching program. But sometimes creating content can just be annoying. For example, I am needing to film these YouTube videos on a Saturday. Do I want to be doing this on a Saturday? Not necessarily. Do I love creating YouTube videos? I do, but because of time commitments last week and because I'm going out of town next week, it had to be done. So I wanna share with you in this video exactly what tools I use to speed up my process so that I'm not gonna be spending all day here today filming my videos and making sure I'm getting the most out of every content that I create to be able to put on multiple platforms. Now in my last video, which I will link up here, I actually break down every single expense I have in my business and a majority of those expenses are tools and softwares that help me create content. The line item for all of those tools and subscriptions was around $2,000. And I know that can seem like a lot, but if it can help you create content faster so that you're not spending all of your time creating content and getting to your life, probably $2,000 might be worth it. If that content is making you money. And in that video, I talked about some of the tools that I needed to cancel. So I figured in this video, I would give you my top 10 tools and how I use them in my business and why I would never give them up. So because I do reels occasionally and stories, I need a tripod that my phone goes on. And I love this particular tripod. It is from Loom Cube. I will link everything in the description box below. And then I just got this attachment for my phone from Amazon. And it just makes it super easy to put on here so that I can get B-roll of myself, just set this up and get B-roll of myself filming videos to add as reels. Uh, I can, in my this video right here, I vlogged some of my video on my phone with this tripod as well. So it just makes it super easy, super compactable. Like it's, we can get it the whole way down to here is the size of it, perfect. Now when you are creating vertical video, you need good audio. And so this little microphone has been awesome. I'm not sure what the name of it is again because there's nothing here, but it is a Bluetooth microphone, which I can link right to my phone. It is from Amazon and I will share the link below, but it gets great audio if you're watching any of my reels and you hear my audio on my reels, it's from this Bluetooth microphone. Now, when you are creating content for multiple platforms or you're trying to manage creating content for multiple platforms, things can get kind of messy and unorganized. And so the one tool that I use to organize all my social media content and build out our social media content plan is Asana. Let me actually show you what my Asana social media calendar looks like. This is my content calendar inside of Asana. And yes, it's color coded and I love it. And let me just explain what you're seeing here. We have color coded based on the different types of posts they are. So again, everything that I do starts with YouTube, which is this red color right here. And then we have pink is our IG story. Then we have a promo email. So this is emails. This is then a post, so an Instagram post. And you see we have one more. This is then our weekly newsletter. So when we have promotional content going out, you'll see it's this blue color. But when we have our weekly content, it is this newsletter. This is how we're able to keep things all organized so we know exactly what needs to go out when. And when we go into a promotional sale or a promotional period, you will see if I come on up here, that the blue cards start to show up more because we are promoting something. So in September, we promoted the Profit Per View Workshop. And so there are multiple blue cards promoting the Profit Per View. And we also have those posts and those stories and those reels that are all going out. And why Asana is so important in your social media creation because it just keeps things so stinking organized. And while I love Asana for my social media calendar, I use it in every aspect of my business and personal life. In fact, three years ago, I made a vacation packing list in Asana 
that I have now used for three years straight. So I don't have to sit down every June when we get ready to leave for vacation and think about, do I have everything on this list? I created one master list in Asana and I use it every single year. We also use it to make sure we get everything done in our launch. I also use it to know I've done everything in this particular video. I also use it to help organize my team and what they're working on and also my entire business like brand colors, brand fonts, just a super easy company guidebook and it's all built inside of Asana. I did just wanna show you a few more things that I use Asana for. I talked about a business hub and this is what my business hub looks like. It has everything that I need um, in reference to my team, important information like our core values, my bio, all of our human resources information, our brand guidelines, training videos when we onboard new employees, um, SOPs, management, funnel links, affiliate links, marketing resources. So this is like a one-stop hub for employees and myself to get things super quickly that we need. This is another Asana board that I love and it's called my at a glance. So this is my 90 days. You, This is particularly quarter three. And you can see each month what our focus was going to be, what my goals were, what our sales goals are, if we happen to get these goals done, what are our big picture goals? And then of course, what we are all working on the team wise in that quarter. It just keeps us all on the same page and knowing exactly what we're doing. So just a few other things that Asana does. I'm thinking about doing a more in-depth video on Asana. If that is something that you would like me to do, share in the comments below anything specific you would like me to share in that video because I do have it coming up. I haven't filmed it yet and I want to focus the content in that video for the specifics you're looking for me to share when it comes to Asana. Let's move on to graphics because I am not a lover of graphics. That's why I show up on video. That's why I talked about doing reels and stories. It's video. I'm not a graphic designer, but I still create content for Pinterest. I still create reels on Instagram. Sometimes I create thumbnails for my videos as well. So bar none, the best place for creating graphics is going to be Canva. Now I know we hear a lot about Canva in the online space and you probably know a lot of what it does, but I want to share with you one thing that I don't see a lot of people talk about that allows us to streamline our social media creation in our business and that is using templates. So I actually hired my brand designer that I love for a VIP day, Mackenzie Matter. I will link all of her information below. And she created social media templates for us specific to my brand. So every time we need to create a Pinterest image, we have a template for it and it's super easy for anybody to use. We can bring in a virtual assistant, an intern, copy paste, just change the text. She's also created carousel graphics for us, cover photos for us, workbooks, slide deck templates. And this is huge because I continue to keep my brand on par to what it looks like across the board without having to create something new every single time. Basically every piece of graphic that I can create can have that high level brand design feeling because Mackenzie created these templates for me in Canva to use over and over again. Again, Canva is very popular. So I would actually, before we move on, love to hear a tool that you currently cannot live without in your business down in the captions and see if I happen to mention it in the next couple of tools that I'm gonna share with you. So let me know down there. I wanna show you an example of these templates. So right here is one of our slide deck templates. If I come in here, uh, we have specific slides that are already templated out that we can use anytime we are teaching something. And this is an example of what Mackenzie's made for us. And she explains, you know, what each slide is used for. But in addition to this slide deck, we also have what I think is amazing and makes our life so much easier as well is these Pinterest templates as well. So here's one of those Pinterest templates. You see template number two, template number one, and all we have to do is just swap out the photo behind it and change the text to be able to create Pinterest pins, multiple Pinterest pins for every single video that we create and make sure everything remains color-coded on brand. The other template that I love is this workbook template. Again, these are all templates Mackenzie created for us that we can then use over and over again. And so we have a table of contents template and just all these different types of pages we may need in any kind of workbook that we create, whether it's a lead magnet, uh, whether it's a workbook for our course, a workbook for a workshop, but these are game changer inside of Canva. 
Next, I want to talk about a tool to help you come up with content ideas because let's be real, we feel like we eventually run out of things to say or we're not really sure what we should say. Because my primary content is focused here on YouTube and all my content starts with YouTube because it's the best content you can create, I use vidIQ to come up with content ideas and I am able to use it to create a year's worth of content strategically planned to grow my audience, grow my YouTube channel, but more importantly, grow my revenue in my business. vidIQ allows me to dive into the specific terms and phrases that my ready to buy viewer, not just anybody, my viewer that is ready to work with me, ready to buy from me, is searching on YouTube for, so I know how to create the best content to get in front of them faster. Inside of vidIQ, the biggest asset is being able to search keywords. And again, this is part of a bigger process called my Propel Keyword Framework. But one of my main keywords on my channel is YouTube for business. And what I'm able to do inside of vidIQ is go on over here to related keywords. So this can provide me even more potential ideas for my YouTube channel. But again, it's gotta be within my strategy. And it's also gonna tell me how often each one of these topics are searched on YouTube per month and what the competition is like. So when we're going through here, we're looking for topics that we really think that we could stand out for. So for example, YouTube automation has a million searches and low competition. So if you wanna do a video on YouTube automations, boom, a huge opportunity there. Um, and again, this just helps me solidify content ideas and the direction of the videos that I wanna take. The other thing that you could use vidIQ for, which I don't use for a lot, if we take, uh, let's say, YouTube automation, right? That was a good keyword. If we go back to our dashboard and we go to AI title generator and we go YouTube automation, it can generate title ideas for you, but it, you're going to see a lot of uh, generic things like unlocking and escaping and boosting, but you can use this as a starting point to come up with content ideas. Now, this is a more detailed process that I teach inside of my YouTube coaching experience. If you are interested in taking YouTube seriously for your business and building out a content plan that is gonna generate more revenue to your business, i.e. more sales of your courses, or book you more coaching clients, you can absolutely apply to this coaching program at trinalittle.com forward slash apply. We do not accept everybody. It is very exclusive because I work with my clients one-on-one -on -one inside of this program helping them build their content plan, coming up with their title ideas, their thumbnail ideas, reviewing their scripts for them, reviewing their analytics on the back end of their YouTube channel. I'm basically their YouTube strategist in their business inside of this coaching program. So if that's something that you're interested in looking into, go to trinalittle.com forward slash apply and we'll be in contact to see if we're a good fit. Now, the process that vidIQ helps me do is the profitable keyword framework. And the profitable keyword framework is our process for developing this year's worth of content ideas. And if you're not ready yet to jump into the YouTube coaching program, you can join my workshop, Profit Per View, to learn how to develop this profitable keyword framework for your content on YouTube. Just go to trinalittle.com forward slash PPV to save your seat inside. I will tell you that the reason why using vidIQ is so important is because you want to build a content plan on YouTube that is bingeable because bingeable content does two things. It gets people binging your channel, which YouTube looks for in a channel. YouTube will promote more content from a channel if the algorithm sees people are watching multiple videos of yours because the more people are on the platform, the more ads YouTube can serve, the more money that YouTube will make. The other thing that it does beneficial for you is the more videos you can get somebody to watch, the more you warm them up to ultimately becoming a client, becoming a sale, even becoming a lead. That's why when you are creating content on YouTube, you need to be very strategic in each video that you put up because it's not just a part of a one video series. If you watch this series that I just wrapped up a few weeks ago, it is an entire series that takes my viewer from video one, two, three, four, until the final video where I have a solid pitch to go do something in my business to help me make money. And if you're following this particular series, I just kicked this off last week because I wanna make sure I'm serving the algorithm so it gives me more free promotion so I don't have to cut a check to Zuckerberg to get my content in front of people. And I want you to build this relationship with me watching video to video. And that is why vidIQ is so important because it helps you build that strategy for YouTube. 
Let's move on to the next tool and maybe you've heard about this one, maybe you've been avoiding this one, but it's ChatGTP. And I'm going to tell you it is game changer in speeding up your content creation or your social media content. I will tell you, I was a little late to the chat GTP game, absolutely. I just didn't know what to put in it, what questions to ask it. And then recently I went to VidSummit and the talk around AI was massive. And I started to realize how I could really use ChatGTP not only as an asset, but to speed up my content creation as well. And so the best way that I would recommend using ChatGTP is to just get in there and start giving it information. So recently I wanted to really build out an avatar on ChatGTP of my ideal coaching client for the YouTube coaching experience. And I just fed it information and fed it information and started asking it questions and then fed it more information, asking questions, fed it more information. So I am building up basically this AI avatar that is my target audience. And so I can start spitting into it. What are the best content ideas? What are the best title ideas for this particular video idea that I have that will attract more of my ideal viewer? What is the best thumbnail that I should create that my ideal viewer is going to click on? What are some of the bonuses I should create that my ideal viewer would love? And the more you feed the algorithm information about who your person is, the better results that you get. And honestly, it has saved me so much time. It has allowed me to get out of my head too when it comes to thinking about bonuses, thinking about sales page copy, thinking about social media content. I will tell you, it can be generic. That's why you've got to give it a lot of information and then you've got to put your own finesse to it. You've got to put your own personality to it, but it does save you so much freaking time creating the amount of content us business owners need to create. Now, the biggest asset that ChatGTP has for you is opening up one chat and feeding it as much information as possible about your target audience. So I've been able to do that here in this particular chat. So what I can do now is this AI knows a lot about my, uh, my audience. I've given it loads and loads of information. So I'm creating this video right now about social media tools. So what I'm gonna do is type in here, provide me a title that my audience will most likely click on. So what we'll do is we'll let it do its thing and it doesn't always give the best things, but you can talk to it again and it can go back and forth. You can give it more information about who you want to get clicked on and we're not always gonna find things that we like. One thing that I love that I will share with you here, I actually asked ChatGTP again with all the information I had about my audience, what would be the best way to summarize my YouTube coaching experience? And then I copied and pasted everything on the YouTube coaching experience sales page and gave it even more information. And it basically was able to create bullet points of the benefits or the highlights of this particular program that I absolutely loved. And I may have not have ever thought of it in this particular way. So again, ChatGTP can really help you speed up your workflow, your process, as long as you're giving it information specific to your audience so you don't get generic stuff back. The next tool that I wanna to talk about ensures the content you're creating on social media is actually generating an ROI. And that is Google Analytics. If you do not have Google Analytics set up and you're not sure where your sales are coming from, you could be wasting your time creating content that does nothing for you. So last year we worked with Carrie Poppleton to set up our Google Analytics dashboard. And what this allows us to see is, are we actually generating traffic from TikTok? Is the time that we put into our TikTok videos paying off with leads or even traffic to our site? And after doing TikTok for about six weeks, two times a day, we literally saw about no traffic to our offers from TikTok. So that told me, guess what? I can stop focusing on TikTok because it's just not working for me. The other thing that we saw during this time period, because I was also doing reels as well, is while I got the same amount of traffic to my offers from Instagram and YouTube, the people that came from YouTube converted two times higher than the Instagram traffic. Just again, reiterating to me, the time I'm putting into YouTube here is paying off because I am warming up my audience here on YouTube so that when they go to my offer, when they go to my landing page, they are two times more likely to say yes than somebody from Instagram. This is why it's so important that you need to have your Google Analytics set up and why I have Carrie as a guest expert inside of my YouTube coaching experience program because if my clients are creating content on YouTube, I want to show them for sure 
how their YouTube channel is generating traffic and how well it's generating traffic and if they're wasting their time on other platforms. This is an example of why Google Analytics and having a dashboard is so important. It's because I can see exactly how much traffic I am getting from YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, and I'm seeing how many are purchasing this. Now, a lot of people here for direct are probably coming from my emails, and I could even segment that more with UTM links and figure out what specific emails got most people to buy. But I want you to know that understanding where your traffic is coming from is going to allow you to know what social media you should actually focus on that are gonna get you the best results. Again, you can see I've had 13 sales from YouTube, uh, 15 sales from Instagram, and I am running ads. So sometimes it doesn't always pick up ad traffic. We do have uh, specifics here for ads, but somebody can see my ad, then maybe look at my Instagram profile, and then click on the bio to buy. So it's so close that again, 13 versus 15 sales, and I know I'm putting no ad dollars over on YouTube, that YouTube is really organic, just again shows me that YouTube is where I should be focused. And if you look at this 13 purchases for the 200 users to the sales page, that's a 6% conversion rate. And that is pretty high for industry standard when it comes to sales page conversion rates. And this is specific to YouTube. I don't know if this is a tool so much as a software maybe, but one of the best ways to engage on Instagram is to create shareable content. That's how you're really gonna grow on YouTube is if your people start sharing it to their people. And the most shareable things are GIFs or GIFs, however you want to say it, but when you tie it in to your niche. So one thing that we've been doing on social media that we see a lot of people loving is memes and GIFs, and we go to jiffy.com to get these GIFs, GIFs. We also like to incorporate them into our YouTube videos as well to show some personality. You will at least see a Real Housewife GIF from me or a Gilmore Girls GIF from me as well. But it just allows you to show more personality in your social content, in your video content, to represent something you're trying to say than just a talking head. I literally just go to the platform and I love to scroll what Housewives quotes there are or Summer House or Vanderpump Rules or Gil more girls and it just makes my content a little bit more shareable and can represent my personality and my sense of humor a little bit better. I will use Giphy for a lot of different things and I just either type in what I'm looking for like frustrated and see what comes up. Gotta spell it right first <laughs> and see what comes up. Anything that relates to my brand I see always sunny in Philadelphia, which is something that I watch, something that I could pull up. The other thing that I will do, we'll pull specific shows. So we can do Gilmore Girls. And maybe I am talking about excitement that I got another sale from my YouTube video and I could put that on a social post or in my story or in my email or even in this YouTube video right now because it just makes it more engaging. It makes it more fun. The next software is another video software. And I'm gonna combine these two because I've really used one a lot and I'm starting to get into the other one more. So Video Leap and CapCut. I'm not one person who's gonna jump from app to app to app because it's gonna take me time to learn a new app every time I jump. So usually when I get into an app, I will stay in that app. And so I've been using Video Leap for over a year, probably a year and a half now. But the more I see of the capabilities that CapCut has and the captions it can provide, I am starting to play more with CapCut and I will dedicate more time to learning it. But if you're creating vertical video, if you're creating stories or you're creating reels or TikToks, I highly encourage you to use CapCut or Video Leap. And CapCut is also a great desktop editor, so you could use CapCut as well to edit YouTube videos just like this. This is what CapCut looks like on your desktop, and you can create a new video by clicking right up here, and what you can do is decide what the ratio is gonna be. So if you wanna do a YouTube video versus maybe a reel, it's easy to choose from here. Now what I've been using CapCut for recently is creating ads. And so you can see a specific ad that I created here and the captions that I added because CapCut allows you to add these captions really easy. It allows you to edit them over here. 
And so if you're looking to test out another option for video editing, I would for sure try out CapCut. This is editing Trina, realizing I forgot one major tool that speeds up my social media content creation, especially vertical videos, and it's Elise Dharma's On Video subscription. This is something that I pay once a year for, but it is a game changer when it comes to creating vertical videos because she will send you weekly video ideas. So when you come in here, you will get the month's worth of content ideas, the week's worth, sorry, of content ideas. So like if you come into October 25, you go to the Google Doc format here. We can also export it into our Asana as well. But if we just look at the Google Doc, what she does every single week is provide you concept ideas, inspiration, the link to an example, and ideas for what to share. Now, I'm telling you, if you want to do vertical video, 100% check this out. I will leave a link below. I am an affiliate for this because I'm not a vertical video person. I'm a solid YouTube long form content. Go to trinalittle.com forward slash on video because I'm telling you right now, this is the best place to get started creating vertical videos that will get in front of people that will buy from you, work with you. And this is the easiest way to do it. Now, because YouTube is my primary piece of content, I create every single week, and it is how I repurpose content for social and email and blogs, all stemming back from my YouTube video. I have specific videos that I use in my YouTube production process to get videos out every single week. And more recently, I've been trying to do two times a week, and I'm gonna share with you every single tool that I use to make my YouTube creation, production, editing, uploading, optimizing, promoting process easier in this video on your screen right now.